everybody, Josh from Silka here, and today I've got kind of a strange, uh, call it marginal gains topic, but this one started with a frustrated, angry customer. Um, it became a really interesting deep dive. You guys know me, I, I like tech. Uh, an interesting deep dive into something that I've never really paid much attention to before, which uh, is the refraction of light and how that can be changed with surface coatings. Uh, uh, particularly oils. And so it starts with these. And these are, uh, we'll, we'll cut some closer B-roll here, but these are DT Aerolite spokes, very uh, expensive high-end spoke, and they are black, as you can see. Um, pretty hard to get good close-up uh, view of to see how black they are. But we had a customer quite frustrated come in through our inbox and he said, hey, I, I wash my bike with your bike care products and my spokes turned a sort of brownish purple. Uh, he said, well, that's weird. You know, I know the coatings and the treatments they use on stainless steels in products like this and none of them are gonna be affected by anything that, uh, you know, or in any of our bike care products. And so, uh, so I bought a box of these spokes and we started playing and I found, wow, you know, our uh, detox, our brake and drivetrain cleaner, makes the spoke look brown and purple. And then I thought, well, I wonder if we wax it first, if that could protect it. And then I found that our wax products all made it look brown and purple. And then I thought, well, if soap makes it look funny and cleaners and waxes make it look funny, um, you know, what about like water on a paper towel? And turns out water on a paper towel makes it look... Um, black and purple. And so I called my friends at DT. Uh, thank you guys. So uh, good friends I've known for many, many years in Switzerland and said, hey, you know, help me understand what's going on here. And they said something that really kind of blew my mind. He said, he said, get a little bit of oil on your finger and rub it over the brownish purple spot and let me know what happens. And sure enough, I grabbed a little bottle of Synergetic. I didn't even shake it uh, to get the tungsten, the black tungsten disulfide from the bottom, but wiped it with the finger. And what do you know, it's black again. Um, and so this is fascinating stuff. So without getting into all the names of all the coatings, the basic surface coating that you can use on a stainless steel, right? Cause it's stainless, it doesn't wanna take color. Um, the basic coating that they can do is actually pretty high-end coating. Um, makes it near black, but under good light, you realize that it really makes it kind of a purplish, brownish-ish color. And then something amazing happens when you oil that, or even, I mean, like the oil in your skin uh, can be enough to do it. It completely changed the way the light refracts and you have black. I mean, it just looks black. And so we started playing around with this and I noticed that, you know, I bought myself another box of uh, DT spokes and I noticed that they're a little bit tacky when you get them. Uh, and then I bought some from some other companies and noticed the same thing and called and ultimately confirmed my suspicions that, you know, at the, all of these companies are using similar coatings, but at the end of the production line, they are basically uh, oiling the spoke with a very, um, uh, kind of a very high viscosity, uh, very tenacious oil that generally stays in place, making the spoke look black until you hit it with, uh, you know, a cleaner or some aggressive, some rubbing, um, something like that. So, uh, you know, if you've seen the same thing or if you go out, look at the spokes on your bike now, pretty much if you've cleaned it at all, ever, um, and if you've ever used any sort of brush or anything to scrub or really any sort of soap on it, you are going to see this and try the trick in the sunlight. It's just amazing. We've tried to shoot it in the studio. I'm going to have to find a nice sunny day to do it outside, so hopefully we can cut the B-roll in here. Um, but it is just like an amazing little magic trick. A little bit of uh, oil on your fingers, run it over the spoke, and they just look amazingly black and new again. So a little trick there. Now... As we're working on this, it hit me that this is the same <laughs> exact thing that happens with uh, anodized titanium. So when you anodize titanium, it is not like aluminum, right? With aluminum, you are essentially creating an oxide layer on the surface of the aluminum that is porous and can accept a dye. And then you are dyeing it, and then you are locking that dye into that oxidized surface. And that's how we can get the amazing aluminum anodized colors we can get. 
titanium is a whole other animal. There is just a crazy thing that happens when the oxide forms in the titanium that if it happens at different voltages of electricity, you get the light refracting is in, as different colors. Um, so there are seven colors or so, give or take, uh, that you can anodize titanium. Everybody worldwide gets exactly the same color when they do it uh, because it is not a product of dye. It is actually a product of the material itself. Um, and as you run through zero to about 120 volts, you get these colors. And then in between, you actually have bands of no color at all. Um, it's pretty fun to watch the anodized process happen uh, because you'll actually go through some pretty bright colors and then they disappear and then more colors come. Um, and it's also a one directional process. So the colors that you get at low voltage, once you're past them, uh, you can never get them again unless you strip or, or sand the part back. Um, but you can get the higher voltage uh, colors after that. It's pretty cool. Maybe we'll do a video on that if you guys... Uh, well, leave me some comments and notes. You want to see us anodize some cages um, and see how that works. It's pretty fascinating stuff. But another common complaint that we get from people is that their cages look funny or that there's two cages at the bike shop and one is slightly different than the other or it has spots. And the reason that the cages come wrapped in tissue paper when you get them, is that something as simple as the oil in your skin um, is enough to cause these spots. And it's the exact same cause. Let me see if you can um, try to get that here. I kept the white backer card on so you could see it. Um, let me move it around in the light. Uh, the reason is exactly the same thing that's happening when you put the oil on the spoke. Um, you are changing the angle of refraction uh, of the light in the metal, making it look darker. And that's why when you do fingerprint or you put a, get some oil or something on your anodized titanium, it looks darker, right? It never looks lighter. It always looks darker. So how do we solve this? Well, you solve this as simple as uh, rubbing alcohol from the grocery store. Uh, acetone works great, denatured works great, and you essentially just get it on your microfiber towel. Um, do not use paper towels, please. They are scratchy, um, and they're also, they're not washable. You know, it's kind of nice to have a, uh, something that we can, we can wash and reuse with our microfiber towel. But you can see how even just the wetness of that makes it look dark, and then as the alcohol evaporates, the color is going to go back to the bourbon. So the same holds true for all of your anodized titanium, whether it's a bicycle, whether it's one of our bottle cages, you know, any of the other components on the bike, uh, skin oil or any oil, uh, splattered chain lube, <laughs> right? If you're using oil-based are all gonna make it look darker, wipe it with an alcohol or an acetone, it evaporates and you have fixed the problem. So there you go, uh, refraction of light uh, caused by skin oil, by uh, intentional oiling of the product to control the color. Uh, who knew? I, I did not know. And now I do. Anyway, let me know what you think down in the comments. Let me know what other interesting questions, uh, things like this that you've come across. I'm sure there's a million of them. You know, why is it I do this and this happens? Ask it down below and we will try to get a video put together for you. Uh, and you know, there's a lot of stuff that I have no idea on and I will go and find people smarter than me uh, to help us answer the hardest questions. Thanks as always for watching. We'll see you next time.